When human beings are very young, a great many of the differences between the two sexes, male and female, do not seem very obvious. Little boys and little girls enjoy doing the same things. And of course, their bodies work in much the same way. In fact, it is very interesting how many features they have in common, except on the outside. Little boys have a penis and testes on the outside of their bodies. Little girls have no penis and testes. They have a little passage inside themselves that opens to the outside in roughly the same place. As they grow older, changes occur in their bodies and also in the way in which they feel and behave. We then begin to notice more differences between the sexes. The changes take place gradually. From the time they are about 11 years old, Young people pass through a period when their bodies change over into those of adults. During this period of adolescence, or becoming adult, people of both sexes still have many common interests. But they become aware of these changes in themselves. The boys' male characters become more noticeable, and so do the feminine ones of the girls. The shape of a woman's body is different from that of a little girl. And a boy's body alters as he becomes a man. Hair appears on various parts of the body, more so in men than in women. Boys' voices change or break very noticeably. And during this growing up period, young people change their attitude to each other. They usually become more interested in and attracted to members of the opposite sex. Later, when they have grown into adults, most people marry. After this, they usually become parents. To produce a child, a female sex cell from the mother's body must be joined by a male sex cell from the father's. Adult people's bodies are able to produce sex cells. But what are these sex cells? How can they develop into a new human being? To answer these questions, we must know something of how our bodies are built up. This girl is scraping away a little bit of the lining of her mouth. She places some of it on a glass slide and covers it with a drop of water to prevent it drying up. She then places a small piece of glass called a cover slip over the drop of water. The scrapings can now be looked at through the microscope. They appear greatly enlarged. We see a number of small objects, and each one of these is called a cell. Cells are very small. These are so small that about a thousand of them, end to end, measure an inch. The material of which a cell is made is called protoplasm. Each cell usually has a special part inside the protoplasm called the nucleus. Cheek cells are just one of the kinds of cells in the body. We can also prepare bits of other parts of the body in various ways, so that we can look at them through a microscope. These, for instance, are gristle cells. They are scattered through a substance which is found in our noses and at joints between bones. Nerve cells look quite different from either of the previous kinds. They have long, fine branches, so that nerve messages can pass from cell to cell. These are red blood cells. One of the interesting things about them is that unlike other cells, these have lost their nuclei by the time they are mature. This is a piece of a gland. This gland has hollow spaces lined with cells like these. Every person's body consists of many tissues made of various kinds of cells, whether they are children or adults, men or women. Now, here is some tissue from a testicle. This is found in boys and men, but not in female bodies. It is part of the two glands called the testes, which lie outside the body. When a man is fully grown, this tissue produces male sex cells called sperm by the division of its cells. These cells are arranged in layers. The outer ones have a different shape from the inner ones. These have become separated from each other and grown tails. They are sperm cells. 
Let us watch a diagram of a lining cell growing into a sperm cell. It has a large nucleus in its protoplasm. Most of the protoplasm of the cell passes backwards, leaving the nucleus and a thin covering layer behind. The tail grows longer. Here are some live sperm cells that have been produced in the testis. They are the smallest cells that the body produces. And unlike all the other cells in human beings, they swim by little tails. Each sperm has a head portion containing a special type of nucleus. A man's body produces sperms of two kinds, although they all look alike. But the difference is important, as we shall see later. In women's bodies, there are glands called ovaries. This is a drawing of some ovary tissue. Little sacs, or follicles, full of fluid, keep forming inside the ovaries. Each contains a female sex cell, the egg cell. This has a jelly-like layer around it and no tail. Inside the protoplasm is a nucleus, which is again of a special kind. Egg cells are big cells. About 300 of them measure an inch. If sperms are anywhere near an egg cell, they swim towards it in large numbers. They try to wiggle through the layer around the egg cell. Eventually, one of them reaches the egg cell and enters it. After this, none of the others can enter. Here is a real egg cell with a sperm cell inside its protoplasm. This is the sperm cell with its head and tail. Presently, the nucleus of the sperm enlarges. Then the male nucleus and the female nucleus come together and fuse and become a single nucleus containing material from both parents. The combining of the two sex cells with the fusion of their nuclei is called fertilization or conception. It marks the beginning of the life of a new human being. If you remember, sperms are of two kinds. When the egg cell is fertilized by a sperm of one type, it will develop into a boy. If fertilized by a sperm of the other type, the egg cell will develop into a girl. After fertilization, the egg cell divides. The protoplasm divides so that there are two cells, each containing something from both parents. By dividing again and again, these cells become many cells. In reality, these divisions take several hours, but we have made them seem quicker by special photography. All this is happening inside the mother's body. The one original cell becomes a ball of cells that we call an embryo. From these cells, all the various kinds of cells that make up the tissues of the body will develop. It is not long before they become arranged into groups, which give rise to the varieties of tissues. For instance, some time later, some of the cells from an embryo look like this. When they have finished dividing, they will form part of some special skin tissue. Here is a similar cell, more highly magnified. This is the edge of the cell. Here is the outline of the nucleus. In such a cell, we can watch cell division taking place in detail. First of all, the nucleus seems to disintegrate, and a number of threads or chromosomes become visible. Some of these are descended from the nucleus of the father's sex cell, some from that of the mother.
threads arrange themselves in the middle of the cell. Each thread then splits in half. The halves separate, each travels to the opposite end of the cell from its partner. A new nucleus forms at each end of the cell round about the groups of threads. Then the rest of the protoplasm splits into two pieces, so that we are left with two cells instead of one. So we have seen the way in which the cells of all the varied tissues of the body develop. They arise after a male and female nucleus with chromosome threads from both parents have joined to form a nucleus in the fertilized egg cell. A child has resemblances to both its parents because at the moment of conception, cells from both their bodies join together. Then the sex of the child is established. A boy is the result of one kind of sperm from the father fertilizing the egg cell. The other type of sperm produced by the father will cause a girl to develop from the egg cell. Finally, these sperm cells and egg cells can only be produced by adult people's bodies. 